This is a review for Seven Wonders by Repost Productions. It plays three to seven players and plays in about 30 minutes regardless of how many players you're playing. To begin the game you're going to remove all the cards which have a player number listing greater than the number of players that are playing. Then you're going to shuffle each of those decks and place them in the center of the board along with the victory point tokens and the money and you're going to give each player a player board which represents a different wonder of the world. There are two sides to each player board, but they are in theory balanced, so you can mix and match, and deal each player seven cards from the first deck. You also begin the game with three money. The game is played in three ages. Each age will have six turns in it. Each turn is simply choosing a card from your hand, playing it, and then passing the rest of the cards to the person on your left. There are three ways to play a card. You can either play it face up in front of you for the cost shown on the card. You can discard it face down to the center of the board for three money. Or you can pay the cost shown on your lowest level of unbuilt wonder and discard the card under there to show that you have built it. These are raw resources and manufactured goods. When you build these, they are provided every turn for you at no cost. These are just victory points, which are counted at the end of the game. These are sciences. There are three different ones. It's set collection. If you have all three different, for each set of three different, you get seven points. And if you have a bunch of the same, it's, uh, it's how many you have of the same kind squared. So you get it both for the sets and for, the, uh, for having multiples of the same. When you build something, you either just place it in front of you or tuck it under the board so that you can see its production value. The resources provided uh, each turn do not carry over from turn to turn. They are use it or lose it. And uh, each of the wonders has an innate production of uh, one type of resource. If a card lists another card right next to its cost, that means if you already have that building built, in this case a scriptorium, then this card is free for you to build. You do not have to pay its cost. If you do not have the particular resources that you need to build a card, you can pay a neighboring player two money to use one of theirs. This doesn't stop them from using it, it just means you can use it as well. They cannot refuse that purchase. There are some cards which will make it cheaper. For instance, this one lets you pay the player on your right only one gold per resource of that type that you use. At the end of each age, you will uh, check for military supremacy. You will see how many of these shield symbols you have. If you have more than the player on your right, during the first age you will get one victory point for each neighbor that you have greater military power than, and they will get negative one point. In the second age you will get three points for each neighbor that you have more military power than, and they will get negative one point. And during the third age you will get uh, five points for each neighbor that you have uh, greater military power than, and they will get negative one point. And then you check the player on your left in the same manner. If there's a tie, there's no exchange of victory points. For the first age, cards will be passed to the left. For the second age, cards will be passed to the right. For the third age, cards will be passed to the left again. At the end of the game, you will earn victory points for any wonders you have built which have victory points, any cards you have built which show victory points, including sets of science cards, and you'll get victory points for your conquests in battle, and you will receive one victory point for every three money you have. This game is quick to teach, quick to play, even at seven players, while it is slightly slower just because there's going to be somebody who's slow at the table. It's still usually under an hour. Not only does the way the cards come up provide replayability, but also the various wonders and their powers. It's also interesting that uh, when you're playing your first game, usually you're only worried about what you're doing, whether you can build things or not. And then your second game, you're looking more at your neighbors, whether they have stuff you can use, whether they're going to hurt you, uh, things like that. Um, and, and then uh, after a few games, you'll start looking beyond your neighbors and whether or not you can pass cards because it'll help somebody several spots away from you. I have the German version of the game, but the only thing this affects is the names of some of the cards and a few of the abilities written on some of the uh, wonders. When I first played this, I uh, expected it to be a lot of hype, 
but uh, this honestly is easily my favorite game of uh, 2010 because uh, because it is interesting, constant decisions uh, at a very low playing time, which is my favorite kinds of games. Uh, Endeavor is another good example of interesting and constant decisions at a very low playing time. And on top of that, it supports up to seven players, which is almost unheard of. Some people say you are paying a lot for what you get in the box. That is kind of true. However, it is a very good game. And I feel I will get my money's worth out of hours spent having played this game.